Okay, so when we're looking at these functions and graphing functions and so forth, I want to remind you what a zero of a function is. A zero of a function are those x values that make the entire function equal zero. Or graphically, those are the x values where the, the, the graph will actually cross the x-axis. Those are the locations. So let's just have some fun finding the zeros of various functions. Here's an example of a rational function, a polynomial divided by a polynomial. And suppose you want to find the zeros of this rational function. What you do is you set this thing equal to 0 and you solve. So you set x squared minus 5x minus 6 all over x. You set that equal to 0 and you solve. Now, when you have a rational function, basically a fraction, if you will, a ratio equal to 0, all you've got to do is take a look at where the numerator, the top, equals 0, solve that, and make sure that none of those solutions make the bottom equal to 0. So here we go. Let's just set the top equal to 0. x squared minus 5x minus 6 equals 0. I'm hoping it's going to factor. Well, it'll definitely be x and x. The negative sign tells me I have different signs here. Two numbers that multiply to give negative 6 and add to give negative 5. I can do this. I can so do this. Because that's going to be x minus 6x is minus 5x. 1 times negative 6 is negative 6. I'm good to go. All right, so either uh, x plus 1 equals 0, which means x equals negative 1, or x minus 6 equals 0, which means x equals 6. And so I see there are two answers. So there are two zeros to this function, if you will, to this rational function. x equals negative 1, x equals 6. But I have to make sure that they really are by checking, going back, making sure that none of these values makes the denominator equal to 0. If I let x equal negative 1, then I have negative 1. That's not 0. If I let x equal 6, then I have a 6 down there. That's not 0. So we're good to go. These are the zeros. Isn't that great? How cool is that? All right, I know you want more. So you said, OK, I can do rational functions. How about a function that starts with r but it's not rational? Well, that would be called a radical function. Now, see, so here's a radical change in our thinking because we got a square root dangling in there. The function is the square root of 2x minus 1. And now what I want to do is I want to find the, the zeros of this uh, function. So what do I do? I take this thing square root of 2x minus 1, and I set it equal to 0 and solve. So how do you solve a crazy thing with square roots? Square roots are always a little tricky. They're very sharp. They're very pointy. They're very scary. But one way to undo a square root is to take the square of both sides. So with care, if we square both sides, now the right-hand side is easy. But it turns out even the left-hand side is easy. The right-hand side, of course, we know is 0. But if you take the square of a square root, they just kind of kill each other, right? They're inverse functions, so I'm just left with 2x minus 1. And solving that, I add 1 to both sides. I divide by 2, and I see x equals 1 half. And so I see that the zeros of this particular function happen at x equals 1 half. Now, I also should caution you that when you get an answer, you always want to check it back when you have square roots. Because you could introduce what's called extraneous roots, which sounds really cool and scary. And they actually are not very cool, but they're very scary. There might be a solution that you artificially generated that doesn't actually satisfy um, the original thing, because you might be taking a square root of a negative or something. So let's just check to make sure. If I let x equal a half, that's going to be 2 times a half. That's going to be 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. Yep, I can take the square root of 0. It's 0. So we're good to go. If I would have gotten a negative thing there, all bets off. OK, one more example. Let's take a look at the function f of x equals 3x squared plus 12. And I want us to find the real zeros of this, meaning where would this, um, the corresponding graph cross the x-axis. OK, so what do we do? Well, we set this thing equal to 0 and solve. Let's use green. I'm in a green mood. So how do you factor this? Well, what I'll do here is I will, um, I'll actually factor it by noticing I can factor out, first of all, a 3. I can divide both sides by 3. And then what do you want to do here? You can either factor this if you want or bring this over. I'll bring it over just to have some fun here. And already you can see I'm a little bit nervous because when I take the positive or negative square root, 
I'm taking it of a negative number, namely negative 4. So what does that equal? Well, that equals plus or minus, and so that's the square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1, which is i, 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 i. And the square root of 4, of course, that's 2. So it's plus or minus 2, i, i, i. So there's two answers. The problem is neither of them are real. They're not real numbers. You got that square root of negative 1. That's no, nowhere on the x-axis. You keep searching on the x-axis as long as you want. You can go all the way from negative infinity to infinity. You're never going to find i on that, on that axis. So what that means is that there are no real zeros. There are no real zeros to this function, which means that if you graph this function, this function will never cross the x-axis. It will either live all above or it will either live all below. And I happen to know the graph of this personally. It's a happy face parabola. So it's going to live all above. It's going to live all above. It never crosses the x-axis. No real zeros. Absolutely awesome. So you can see the, the value of actually finding the zeros. The zeros correspond to where the, cor the uh, corresponding graph crosses the x-axis. You can visualize them. You can solve them algebraically. That's the beauty of zeros of functions. I'll see you soon.